Hey all, this is Raúl. And this is Agatha. And this is Saiwai. Welcome to our second episode. Second episode of Saiwai. Well, I must admit that I didn't think we would last this much. <laughs> <laughs> we got even like over 10 listeners. I mean, th this is real. Yeah, we were a little hyped when we were like <laughs> seeing the statistics in the kitchen. And when we are like super famous and very rich and we have like millions of listeners, uh, the first 10 people, you will be the, the OGs, so... Uh, you can enjoy that already. Shame that the statistics are anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> so we cannot really thank personally to the people. And yet, uh, it's surprising because uh, also, Agatha, you like last very little with your pet projects. Okay, but two episodes is still, still like hyped? within my ra range. Okay, so let's keep like it Like when we do more than... 15 that that would be something for me Oof, will be... to like do something for 15 weeks like to not give up after three mm -hmm. good luck with marriage <laughs> yay <laughs> so anyway uh the topic of today let's get to it okay so uh today i want to tell you mm -hmm. a very weird interesting story mm -hmm. that is also kind of crazy when you get to know the details. Well, not kind of crazy, it's actually super crazy. <laughs> so let me tell you why you can't rob a bank with lemon juice. With lemon juice as in using it as a weapon? or <laughs> That would make sense. Or like squeeze it into the rice and... That sounds like a Spiderman super <laughs> Like Dr. Citric. <laughs> well, let me take you back to that magic era called the 90s. I knew it. Yes. So in 1995, more specifically, bro, remember 1995? I was two years old. I was probably. one. I was one year old. I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> I was today years old. <laughs> Okay, so this happened more specifically on April 19th, 1995, when a man in Pittsburgh robbed two banks... The Pittsburgh, the US of A. Yes. Because we know that everything happens there, obvio. <laughs> yeah, or like all the things that we know about. Um, so he robbed two banks in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. Efficient. Yeah, not only efficiently, he got also hella cash. And Good for him, bad for everyone else. And the weirdest thing here is that he did it on the daylight, in plain sight, like plain view, everyone could see him. He had no mask. Uh, he just entered, he waltzed in the bank. He was carrying a gun, okay, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least he was carrying a gun, I mean, that, that little... But also it's in the US, so you can like get so a gun. Everyone has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> like you just go to see your grandpa Irving and he will give you some M60 or something. The thing is that he just entered. It was, you know, regular business day. He entered uh, with his gun, went to the cash, uh, you know, to the counter and told the worker there, give me all the money. And then, well... What would you do? You know, he gave me, he gave him all the money. Never play the hero. Mm -mm. No, I mean, just give the money. There's those insurance. Places, exactly. They are super insured, so they will always give you the money. Side note, do not commit crime, okay? Like, it's, <laughs> it's literally illegal to be a criminal, okay, guys? If I may, a small anecdote. Uh, so, in the teeny tiny town that I come from, there was a man, a young man, uh, who went to rob the only teeny tiny bank in the teeny tiny town and he came there from our village that's even more tiny by like on his bike on his bicycle like he just got there put the bicycle like next to the wall of the bank put this ski mask on his face to hide his identity which he did just like in front of the camera. <laughs> and 
And then he went into the bank. I don't know if he had any weapon, if he had like a knife, gun, I don't think so. M- maybe some replica or something. And then he just left and got on his bike, took off the mask and then drove home. And he was very surprised when the police came to like take him to jail. He was shocked because he <laughs> really thought it through. And I have a feeling that <laughs> this will be very similar to the story that we're about to hear. Although I'm not really sure of the role of the lemon juice here. Well, that's the whole point here. Because not only the guy had the nerve to rob one bank in plain view during day in a business hour. Uh, but also he was not covering his identity. He just entered. Not even a ski mask that nothing, he put nothing, in front zero. of the camera. Like, like if you are going to Did the bank. Did even like put CCTV in 1995? Yes. And actually you oh. can see the CCTV <laughs> footage online. Like you enter in Google and uh-huh. that's it. So uh, he entered, robbed one bank. And after that, he went to another and did the exact same thing. And no one stopped him. No one said anything. No one raised a word. Okay. He left. And everyone was like, what's with this guy? <laughs> I mean, he literally uh, hit two banks, left with hella cash, and just walking, just like normal, okay? He didn't if run, only we nothing, knew that it's obviously. so easy. Right? I mean, you, you just go and you say, hey, give me money, and they give it to you, and then you go home. So, uh, what happened <laughs> later is that, obviously, the banks called the cops and uh, gave them the CCTV footage. Mm-hmm. Then the cops put the... Uh, security cameras footage on the news it appeared in the 11 o'clock news and the cops were like what's with this guy like the nerve that he has like i'm telling you ice cold okay Mm -hmm. and then they received an anonymous tip probably a neighbor that recognized the man as macarthur wheeler then Uh, wait his first name is macarthur his yeah macarthur so basically, he has two last names. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. I mean, with a name like that, you either become the new Elon Musk or yeah, or you well, rob a bank with your bare face. And I believe that you become the new Elon Musk because they were always picking on you for having two surnames. So uh, the police then went to his home and were like, knock, knock, are you MacArthur Wheeler? And he was like, well, yes. Well, you're arrested. And then he was shocked. He was totally shocked that they caught him. Like, like honestly. And the only words that he could say were, but I wore the juice. And then the cops... Da, 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 da. <laughs> and the cops were like, what with that guy? So, of course, they took him to the station, they questioned him, and uh, he explained that he saw how you can make invisible ink with lemon juice. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, bro. I, I see the logics here. Okay. I, then he was like, bro, I can put lemon juice on my face so my features will be invisible. And, mm-hmm. and w- wait for it because it turns better. He thought that he wouldn't be recognized, but he was like, hmm, maybe I'm mistaken. So he did a trial. He mm-hmm. put lemon juice on his face and then snapped a photo with his Polaroid. Okay. And when he looked at the photo, his features were gone. There was no face. And it's the, foolproof. And the, the, the cops were like, what's wrong with him? They tested him and he was not they drunk. They took a Polaroid he, he was, and his face was visible. It, I mean... His face was as visible as anything else, you know? <laughs> but he wore the juice. He so, wore the I juice. Mean, so he was, he was Why like, Why didn't he make like, his whole body covered in juice and then be like completely invisible? Yeah, and then what? Well, get, get into the girl's shower. And, <laughs> no, like he would totally bamboozle the, the cashier at the bank. As in like, there is this floating gun and you hear the voice and like you can see inside of the mouth because probably the inside of the mouth would be still visible Mm. i'm guessing because unless he would drink the juice also so then it makes your we are getting out of topic (laughs) (laughs) the point here is that he put lemon juice on his face thinking that it would make him invisible and not only it didn't make him invisible but then he admitted that maybe uh, he couldn't properly see the polaroid that he took of himself because the lemon juice got in his eyes 
and it was like really, really stingy. <laughs> the police tested him and he was not drunk, he was not on drugs, he was not delusional, he was just incredibly stupid. That is the amazing story of MacArthur Wheeler, but wait, there is more. <laughs> I mean... Then, it turns out can, that... <laughs> can it be more... Of course, he went to jail, obviously, and that's it, okay? Like, imagine that you're in jail for, like, stabbing someone, or, like, you kidnapped a child for money. Like, you did something really bad, and then you shared the cell with M MacArthur, whatever. Yeah, MacArthur Wheeler. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> well, I robbed a bank. And you're like, damn, that's badass. The juice? Bro, let me give you some advice. It doesn't work. Mm. Yeah, like, my, I mean, I will beat you up. Not, not I mean, just out, just of, like, out of respect to myself for principles. Maybe if you hit him on the head, like something will get, you know, better in his brain. And... Bro, there are things <laughs> that you cannot fix. <laughs> so uh, his story appeared in the magazine World Almanac in 1996. And Professor David Dunning from the University of Cornell. Oh, like Andy from the office. He read it and uh, it like he showed this story to his uh, student Justin Kruger and they both were like thinking, damn, this guy is so incredibly stupid and he's so incredibly mistaken that how, how is it possible? And then they started thinking that it is not something new that, um, let's call them idiots, uh, <laughs> no, because I'm lacking a better word. Well, less they intelligent, well, not even less, like very not th They are just incredibly mistaken, these individuals, they often engage in the weirdest of behaviors just because they are, well, incredibly mistaken. I don't think there is better uh, expression for it. M mistaken is like too nice word for it, I think. Well. They're just fucking stupid. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's very, it's something very stupid too. I mean, but like, if, if you believe that you will be invisible because you've seen a trick to make invisible ink and then you splash lemon juice. It wasn't even, like, mixed in some weird potion that nah, is nah, nah, just lemon juice. Yeah, he just squeezed lemon juice and put it on his face. And that was it. But... Um, didn't he see, like, that his hands didn't disappear? Well, that... Like, I, I really... But the Polaroid. The Polaroid showed no face. Because he couldn't see it. Because he had lemon juice okay, in his I'm getting too deep. Anyway, um, then they realized that this is not new. Because, actually, they quote Charles Darwin when he said that ignorance more frequently begets confidence than knowledge. And also Bertrand Russell said that the problem of the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain, while wise people are always full of doubts. And based on those two quotes of very wise individuals, they were thinking, how mistaken idiots can be? Let's put it to test. And since they were, uh, you know, working in the um, psychology department, they realized that, well, this is actually that we something that we can measure, no? So, then, uh, Dunning and Kruger uh, started a series of tests based on four predictions. The first prediction is that incompetent individuals will dramatically overestimate their abilities. Like the case when he thinks he can learn how to make invisible ink with lemon, mm -hmm. so therefore he can apply it to everything else because he thinks he understands how it works. Or like when teenage boys, they're like, yeah, I've seen that YouTube video and I can like totally parkour and then they break their legs. Yeah, well, I don't think that anyone that does parkour will split an atom, but anyway, this is, I, I mean, it's not my job to You insult. just wish you could do parkour. Bro, I really cannot parkour. <laughs> Imagine me parkour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the second prediction is that incompetent individuals lack the metacognitive skills to recognize competence, meaning that incompetent individuals will not realize when someone is competent. 
Mm -hmm. Then the third prediction is that incompetent individuals are unable to use information of their performance and the performance of others to improve and to measure their own performance. Meaning that idiots are not able to compare themselves to others to realize how little they know. And they cannot learn, basically. Mm -hmm, exactly. They can't or they are not willing to. That's why history keeps on repeating itself. <coughs> and then the fourth prediction is that incompetent individuals can gain insight of their incompetence by training. So, making them more competent, they realize how incompetent they are. Mm -hmm. Those are the four predictions. So it's like, if you teach them, at some point they will realize if how you stupid teach them, they are. Exactly. They will be like, ah, okay. Like, they will get this little click in their brain. Do you think MacArthur MacArthur understood? Wheeler? I have no idea, because... You Maybe know, now he's like a physicist or something. Bro, I don't think so. Well, you can study in jail. Yeah, but would you? But you have a lot of time, you have library, well, and nothing else to do. There's very little... Like, it's either being a lawyer or parkour in jail. <laughs> <laughs> One of those two. You don't get beat up in the yard. You can also get beat up. In, or you can get super jacked in the jail gym. Or you can and then constantly get put lemon juice on your whole body and just stand close to the wall and hope that no one notices. Bro, that is like... <laughs> <laughs> this is like, can we have invisible man? <laughs> we have invisible man at home. <laughs> and then there is Uncle MacArthur naked with his dick out. <laughs> Bro, that sounds like... <laughs> Smelling like a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds familiar. So, <laughs> so, the tests that Dunning and Kruger wanted to do were based on humor, logic, and grammar. Because mm -hmm. there are three areas that share two things in common. Mm -hmm. They are very easy to measure, and everyone thinks they excel at them. Like we think that we are very funny. Or we think that we have perfect grammar. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have perfect grammar in my native tongue. One always thinks that they are the funniest in the room, or that they can solve logical puzzles, or that they have perfect grammar. The problem here is that to, for example, uh, build a correctly, like, a grammatically correct sentence, you need to know some grammar. Mm -hmm. And the same knowledge of grammar that you need to build a sentence you will use it to spot when it's a grammatical error in someone else's sentence. Mm -hmm. So you need to know grammar to see when there is a mistake in grammar. Okay? So, uh, they tested a bunch of volunteers from Cornell University, just some students, and all the tests were similar. The volunteers were given a series of questions and they had to answer as good as they could. After the test, they were asked to rate how good they thought they did in the test, mm -hmm. how good they thought that someone else did, mm -hmm. and to think, like to evaluate what would be their position compared to the average of the results. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they took the grammatical test, have some score. Mind that this is not about knowing grammar or not. It's about how much grammar you think you know mm -hmm. compared to everyone else, okay? And based on their scores, these students, or well, these volunteers, were divided in four groups, okay? The group that did the worst, then a little bit better, then even better, and then the best group, mm -hmm. okay? It happened that the group that always had the best scores was of the students that were more experienced. So like they in were grammar. longer. No, they were longer in university. But okay. didn't they test grammar? They, like, they did. They tested so, so it didn't matter like how good with grammar you are? Yeah, but something interesting was that the longest they were in their studies or like in the uni in general. In the uni in general, mm -hmm. they scored better in mm -hmm. those tests. Okay. Because they also tested in humor and logic. The test. How do they test them in humor? The test like of you, you tell a joke and then depending how many people laugh. The test of humor is actually pretty intelligent because how they did it was that um, they had a series of jokes 
mm -hmm. and they, the students, had to rate those jokes thinking how funny or not funny they thought they were. They would rate them from 0 to 10, okay. being 10 the funniest and 0 the less funny. Mm -hmm. And to write those jokes, they contacted the uh, screenwriters of Saturday Night Live because they are professional comedy writers. So probably writers. none of the jokes were really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so Zero for everyone. So they contacted them. Then they contacted other comedians to write jokes. Mm -hmm. And then they uh, gave these jokes to other comedians to rate them. And the thing here is that to be good at comedy, you have to know what the most people will think it is funny. That's why... That sounds very complicated. That's why usually there's always someone in the room that will make a terrible joke and thinking they are super funny, because otherwise they wouldn't make the joke, and no one laughs because the joke is terrible, because that person doesn't understand what most people think it is funny. Mm -hmm. For example, there were a scale <laughs> from 0 to 10 being zero, this example of joke. What is as big as a man, but weights nothing? His shadow. That was but used. <laughs> that was used as the zero joke. It's it's more of like a logical puzzle. It's than more like a riddle. The, yeah. Like it's something that Gollum would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have the joke that is considered the funniest. Again, this happened in the 90s. Yeah, okay? I, I was thinking that... Yeah, this happened like I 20 years ago. I about the humor okay. of... So, and then the joke that was rated as the funniest is when a kid asks you why it rains, tell him it's God crying. When a kid asks you why God is crying, tell him probably because something you did. That was used as uh, that's the... the funniest joke ever. No, that was used as the funny joke. The ten out of ten. Yes. <laughs> like we, which comedians did they choose to perform this very difficult and very comprehensive analysis of all the jokes known to humanity to choose this joke? The, is it a joke or is it like like a, a a piece of advice from a book for young parents written by some 60-year-old dude who never had kids? I, I, I don't know, but if someone told me that joke, I would be like, dude, just, I mean, focus yourself on something else, you know, like, don't Different be a comedian, career, yeah. do, do something else. Wow. So, anyway... I, I would lose, I mean, this part, like grammar, I think I could do well. There was a time at my studies where I had English grammar class that was very difficult. And I was crying at home in the shower, like being like, oh no, I'm going to fail. I'm so stupid. Oy, oy, oy. And then I got four out of five Bro. as my final grade. And... I almost got five and I was very, like, like I felt like a fraud, like, <laughs> me? <laughs> like a fraud, why? Because I thought that I was so stupid and then turned out that I'm not that stupid, which is, probably makes me well, the perfect you, example I mean, of this study. That is very well put. Because I can come up with conclusions from what you already told me. I'm, well, so, maybe, I'm so smart. Maybe you would be in the highest group. Probably. Well, Maybe be. not with the humor, because I just want to say that I would rate all of them zero, and then they would be like, this girl... <laughs> this girl, what a psycho. She's totally sociopathic, or... Um... Yeah, and without test. Anyway, <laughs> they uh, divided them in these four groups, depending on their uh, grades. Mm -hmm. Okay? With Agatka being in the smartest group. <laughs> and, and then, remember that they all were asked to uh, answer how good they thought they did compared with the rest and how good they ah, okay. put mm -hmm. how good they would put themselves compared with all the others mm -hmm. well the results are uh, pretty pretty amazing <laughs> turns out that uh, let's call them the group of the most educated people 
they estimated themselves under the average. Mm -hmm. They thought, like, their estimation was that they did worse than they actually did, mm -hmm. putting themselves around the percentile 60. Okay. Okay. So turns I, out, I, I would pass, but I'm not the best. Turns out that they were actually the highest mm -hmm. group and their estimation was completely mistaken because they underestimated their score. Like Which, that kid that is always saying like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to pass this exam and then they end up with the best grade and yeah. everyone hates them. And like, ah. Oh. Exactly like that. That's a perfect example, by the way. And then, Here I am, providing the real-life examples. And then, turns out, turns out that the opposite was also true. That the people in the lowest group, mm -hmm. they overestimated I themselves. Being like, dude, I killed the test. I did perfect. Okay? And you can see the gap. I have read the actual paper uh -huh. published back in the day. And the difference... Y you read it back in the day or...? No, published. Back in the 90s? Published back in the day, bro. Listen to the grammar. <laughs> so, they uh, show the graphics and the gap between the estimation and the real score of the idiot group. It's insane. It's so huge. It's like incredible gap, okay? Uh, then, we have the, let's say, a little less stupid group, okay? That their estimation was also mistaken. They also overrated themselves, but was a bit closer. Mm -hmm. Then you More have acceptable. then you have the group of the like let's call them the second group, the mm -hmm. second best group. That their estimation was so accurate. Oh. It was insanely accurate that they knew that they didn't do perfect, but they also be in this group. but they also knew that they were not that bad but also not that good, mm. you know? So their estimation was pretty good. And then you get to see the best group that they underestimated themselves so much, okay? Mm -hmm. What happened here, they were like, how is it possible? Because uh, the people that were the most experienced, like the most competent in those areas, they should know how good or how bad they did. They should know right away. And they didn't. And it was not because they were mistaken, it's a lack of trust in themselves. Because then they were interviewed and they said that they know how much they don't know. Mm -hmm. Then that made the, uh, them, the uh, Dunning and Kruger, they made them realize that there is a certain threshold of knowledge after which you know how big is the field in that you are being tested. And you know how much you don't know. Therefore, the more you know, the more you realize how little you know. Okay. Which happened the same to my brother when he finished his uh, medicine studies. And then he went to the hospital to work with the actual doctors as a resident. And he was every day coming back home being like, these six years of medicine, like nothing. <laughs> I know zero medicine, nothing. And I was like, bro, so what the fuck? <laughs> you know? There is a certain threshold of knowledge in every field that you need to know. For example, if I ask you about the geography of Venezuela, you have no clue. Or I ask you, I ask you how to, I don't know, diagnose um, a cardiac arrest, uh, you wouldn't know. And you'd be like, well, I don't Pain know. Pain in the chest. I don't know if this, if this patient had a cardiac arrest or not. Because there are fields that you know that you know nothing. But I've okay? seen a good doctor. Well, yeah, and I have seen scrubs. So what? <laughs> <laughs> and then you need to know a little about the topic that you're talking about to realize how little you know about it. For example, I know that I have no idea about astrophysics. Oh, like nothing. I would however, even attempt. however, probably I would overestimate my knowledge of chemistry because I know some chemistry. Mm -hmm. You would overestimate or underestimate? That's the thing. Uh, would I? Because I know that I know some chemistry, mm -hmm. but 
How much chemistry I don't know. Do I know enough to know how little I know? Because there are, so the, the point here is that you need to be a little experienced in a field to overestimate your knowledge. And there is a threshold of knowledge after which you become less confident because you know how actually big is the field that we are talking about. And this happens almost in every scientific field, but it's even cooler that um, they repeated the test in different areas mm -hmm. and the results were exactly the same. <laughs> They, oh no, I want to participate in that test. They took a bunch of uh, drivers that they had like, I don't know, more than 10 years of driving experience. Just mm -hmm. driving regular cars, okay? And they like made a test on uh, safety, you know, in the driving. <laughs> boy, boy, the results were shameful. Were like, you know when you uh, do so bad in a test that the teacher would enter in the room sit on the table and be like, in my 20 years of experience, I never saw so bad results in this exam, you know? I'm so glad I never experienced it. Well, maybe it was a pretty good class. But I remember that. I remember that once mm, our teacher was coming and being like, guys, eh, do you know any chemistry at all? <laughs> <laughs> he was like really concerned. And we were like... Mm. I mean, because I left the exam and thinking... Like, yeah, we know so much, yeah. we are so smart. I mean, I left the exam thinking, dude, killed it. <laughs> I did great. And I think I got like 2 out of 10. 2. I, I thought 2%. Bro. That, that would be... I got 2 points out of 10 that the exam had. And I thought I did great. And then I saw my exam and I was like, bro, it was shameful. <laughs> like, red question marks everywhere. So I have experienced the Dunning-Kruger effect on myself. And what is more interesting is that then they took the worst group and they divided them in half. Half of the group received training on the field that they were tested on and the other half didn't. And then they were asked to evaluate themselves again. Mm -hmm. And after training, the worst group got a more accurate estimation of their knowledge than the group that was not trained. Okay. Proving that with training, you can realize how little you know. Uh, this is interesting because you can see the Dunning-Kruger effect everywhere. <laughs> Motherfucking everywhere. For example, in anti-vaxxers. Ah. Oh. Aha, there we go. Mm. Cause... If you are an anti-vaxxer and you are listening to it, turn it off now. You are not welcome here. Unless you actually want to learn. But then... Then, not really anti then please stay. <laughs> well, if you're an anti-vaxxer, if you are a flat earther also. The ability to learn from facts is just... It's not there. Because it's not about facts for those people. I, I, I really don't understand. But <sighs> the next time that you find yourself lecturing someone, you know, passionately about something, maybe think that you are being victim of the Dunning-Kruger effect, and you don't mm -hmm. know how stupid you are. Because you lack the ability to judge yourself, which happens a lot with anti-vaxxers. Like, those guys, they don't know even what they are against. Mm -hmm. Remember that thing that a guy gave the composition, gave like a list of chemical compounds to mm -hmm. an anti-vaxxer and yeah. said, which ones you don't want in your body? And he said, I don't want any of them. And he said, well, I just gave you the chemical composition of an apple. So uh -huh. you, you don't even know what you are against. And that is, I think, a very good example of people that they are fighting science, scientific facts that you just cannot fight because they don't know how little they know. They think that if they read something online, uh, on some Facebook group, excuse then suddenly... me. Epidemiologists? Like, Excuse who needs me, them? Uh, you went to university for 10 years and got a doctorate? Pfft, loser. I did 15 minutes research on Google and I'm an expert. Amen to that, brother. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. I hope that you learned something today. I didn't mean to, you know, offend anyone. However, if you got offended, think about yourself. Like, reflect on yourself. Maybe you saw some behavior maybe you know someone who is being victim of the dunning-kruger effect 
However, probably if you are being victim of Dunning Kruger, you, you don't, don't know. Realize. Exactly. It's like the, the ultimate paradox. Well, I learned that next time I learn about something on Instagram before giving a half an hour lecture to my friends at the party at like one in the morning probably will, after a few shots also i will choose not to this has been all this far i believe now we know why we cannot <laughs> rob a bank with lemon juice on our faces yeah however if you do try please record it uh, we would love to see that <laughs> you will go viral that's for sure oh yeah this fella because they happened in the 90s you know? I have to Google him. Yeah, it's insane. And the guy is just, just like that, you know, with his gun being like super ghetto. Well, I want to thank you all for being here with us, for listening to us. Uh, in the meantime, you can also follow us on Instagram. At sci.y.podcast. And thank you very much. Jenki pa! Jenki pa!